And right now, to start the ball rolling, with his special address and a thought starter for this morning, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Enche Zubair Abdul Raza, GM of Loop Business Division Petronas Dagangan Berhad, and also the CEO of Loop Dagangan Sundiran Berhad. Please help me welcome him to the stage. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. Shahul Hamid Syed Daud, founder and president of the Malaysia Social Media Chambers. Mr. Ezad Emir, vice president and organizing chairman, Malaysia Social Media Week. Distinguished guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, Salamu alaikum, selamat pagi, and salam sejahtera. To the organizer, Malaysia Social Media Chambers, thank you very much for having Petronas Dagangan Berhad on board as a partner for the Malaysia Social Media Week and as presenter for this Saturday's Twitter Ton, an event which I hope that many of us in this room here are also looking forward to be a part of. This is the first time that Petronas Dagangan Berhad has been invited to be part of the Malaysia Social Media Week. It is indeed an honor for us to be here amongst all the prominent names and faces of the Malaysian social media. Ladies and gentlemen, it would be nothing short of obvious to say that social media has changed the way in how we, as companies, communicate with the world. As we let a minute pass since I took the podium this morning, more than 8,000 photos have been posted on Instagram, 50,000 links were shared on Facebook, and about 350,000 tweets were published globally. As we celebrate the digital revolution brought forth by the social media this week, it is worth noting the influence and opportunities that such communication platform present for brand to learn and communicate with our custom customers. The advent of multiple communication platforms on the digital sphere, such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, to name a few, has made it possible for brand to have an open two-way communication with their target audiences, wherever and whenever. There is no limit on how this and now, ladies and gentlemen, moving on. Before I, invite, before I invite our first speaker for today, now I'd like to help to not steal your thunder, <laughs> but to help start the ball rolling. Now, firstly, we're going to address uh, crowdsourcing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you he have heard of the company, General Electric? So a few of you, all, yes? Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I was reading up about social media and how engaging this topic is and relevant it is to all of us, I, was, I stumbled upon this uh, case study from 2013 in Gen for General Electric where they had a jet engine bracket problem. And so, Jeff Immel, okay, the guy who hits uh, GE, actually said, now, why don't we actually have something um, we have a solution coming through crowdsourcing. And so, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm, the, the highlight of this case study is the solution to an aviation engineering problem came through crowdsourcing. And it was submitted by someone who had zero experience in the field. A young Indonesian by the name of M. Ari Kurniawan. And so right now, ladies and gentlemen, to tell us more about not just a tool, uh, which is social media, but its practicality in how we go about discovering a sustainable business model and also to get ideas from the global brain, I would say the global brain think tank. I would like to invite our next speaker right now. He is the regional director 
of Social at Ogilvy and also the Regional Business Director for Social at Ogilvy's key accounts, including one of the most dynamic marketing companies in the world, the Coca-Cola Company. With its experience and insights on innovation, trends, social media and clients' needs to adapt to be relevant, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Jonathan Nguyen. Good morning, everyone. I can't possibly live up to that introduction. Um, my name's Jonathan. I'm here to talk to you um, about crowdfunding uh, or crowdsourcing, of which crowdfunding is one of, one of the topic areas. And I'm supposed to do this in 30 minutes. <laughs> um, I would ask... Like engineering, right? So Gap went to the crowd to get a new design. The new design is the one in the middle. It didn't go very well. Okay, they created a crisis for themselves. And then so they had to go and said, we're really sorry, we did the wrong thing, we're rolling back. And the CMO was fired, yeah. Um, and then as an Australian, Vegemite is an iconic brand. They came out with a new flavor. Uh, and they want, it was a cheese and Vegemite combination, yeah. Instead of calling it Cheesy Mite, which everyone thought it would be called, um, they couldn't because the name was trademarked. Uh, so they went out to the crowd to create a new brand. And the crowd decided that they would uh, make fun of the campaign. So they created the most ridiculous names up there. Uh, but the funniest thing was the name that won was Ice Snack 2.0. <laughs> and the reason why it won was because they used a voting system. And people wanted to manipulate the system, right? So it won. So be very careful um, when you go out and do crowdfunding. It certainly is valuable, but consider the things that I spoke to you about earlier in terms of scoping and brief, and you'll be okay. I'm Jonathan Nguyen. Uh, I hope that was interesting. Um, if you have any questions, uh, who is the organizer here? Uh, if you have any questions, someone will come to you with a microphone or someone will tell me to walk off stage right now. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Now, ladies and gentlemen, do we have any questions for Jonathan? Yes, that lady over there. Can we have a microphone for her? Or you can proceed to the microphone over there, yes. So, uh, thanks, and uh, first of all, just in case you were wondering, uh, yes, I'm from BASF. We are interested in new lubricants for hinges, for door hinges, and uh, you can go to Creator Space um, .bsf.com to propose your idea. Um, but my real question is, what is your opinion about the pros and cons of doing it yourself on your own platform versus using someone like um, Nine Sigma or Innocentive so that there's registered solvers who don't do it on their platform? Um, it's the same question, you know, it's in, in a lot of things, right? So you, should we build our own platform or should we go to somewhere that's established? There is no one single answer that's correct. And I know this sounds like a cop-out. <laughs> there is no one single answer that sounds correct. But I would look at the problem and look at the, the, the ready-made space and, and the people already on, you know, one of those sites that they have. If they have the right group of people who might be able to solve your problem, I think it's worth a try, right? Because it's going to, it's, it's probably going to... So right now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to proceed with our discussion titled Combining Apps and Social Media Campaigns. I'd like to invite right now our panellists onto the stage to take their seats. Can I invite Mr. Martin Kessler, Strategic Account Director, MWI Hong Kong. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you very much. Anna Rokina, Social Data Consultant of Lenovo Singapore. Another big round of applause, please, for this beautiful lady. The thorn among the roses, or rose among the thorns. Once again, Jonathan Nguyen, Regional Director, Social at Ogilvy, Hong Kong. And our moderator for this morning, Mr. Christopher Top, Founder and Social Director, Social Grooves Malaysia. All right. Um, so, uh, 
we're, we're just trying to keep this really, really uh, efficient and fast uh, because I've been told that uh, our time has been cut short. Uh, so I'm just going to give you an overbrief of what we're supposed to talk about. Now, campaigns, social media campaigns are really, really, really important in this time and day where, you know, there are a lot of noises happening around you know, Facebook, Twitter, and all, all other platforms. And uh, how, how are we supposed to get people's attention uh, in this whole uh, uh, big uh, world of mess that we see right now? Uh, so we have our speakers here who are, I guess, really, really creative people um, who's going to share with you about how, how do you even form a campaign? You know, how, how do you make sense of the data uh, that you can extract from the campaign? How are you going to, uh, uh, is it even uh, you know, uh, worth, worth the time and money to even spend on apps? I think apps is a really important uh, uh, a function, uh, a tool uh, for campaigns, but maybe it's not. So these are the discussions that we are going to try and extract from our, our speakers here. And um, after they present, I would like you guys to Think about some questions for yourself, you know. Uh, am I small? If I'm, if I'm a small business, do I start uh, creating campaigns? Do, is it worth creating apps? Or, uh, you know, if I'm, a, if I'm big, how much money should I be, be looking at uh, when I'm, I'm thinking of all these uh, uh, apps that helps my business, whether it's branding, sales, or uh, even, you know, a, a presence, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Anna, uh, who's going to share with you um, about data and how to make sense of uh, campaign, social media campaigns. Thank you. Um, hi all, my name is Anna. Um, I work uh, with the Digital and Social Center of Excellence at Lenovo, Singapore, and we're a global team. So today I have a few minutes to talk to you about stuff that I'm really passionate about, so I hope I will fit my whatever I wanted to share with you in this 10, 15 minutes we have, right? <laughs> so. Um, I'm doing social media list. Your research and work out who would actually download this app and use it and refer their friends. All of the things that um, Martin was talking about, uh, because you know you're competing in a space where people are investing their entire business model on the app. So that's what you're up against. Uh, so creating an app for the purpose of advertising, unless it's amazing, is probably not a good idea. Any thoughts? Other. Fellow panelists? Yep. Well, yeah, I, I definitely agree with Jonathan. You have to be sure that what you're building actually works well as an app. And it's, it's not going to be easy. No matter what you do, it's probably going to be harder than building a web app, for instance. So, you know, I, I get a lot of people that come to me and they want to have an app. And actually, I have to tell them they don't need an app because what they do, you can just have a responsive website and it might work way better for them, and it's more cost effective. Even the most simple apps that you do, they easily can run you 30 to 50,000 US dollars, whereas a web app can be already done on a way lower budget than this. As a representative of brand on the panel, what do you think? Um, I'd like to have a question to you. So if we are, um, hypothetical question, I was not in this situation in Lenovo, but um, I've been in this space for a while. So if you have an app which is advertising, but it's an app for the purpose of a campaign, so it's a short-lived app, you might not need a long life strategy for it, um, and it serves a very niche purpose. So would that be a better way than to use a microsite? Like, I think that app actually probably would be better than microsite. So, so I, I would ask, um, both are valid, right? But if you said, if you said what, it would be totally worth it for, for Brand X if we created an app and 10 people downloaded it, if that was your, your measure of success. I mean, it could be 10, could be 100, right? Or 1,000 or whatever the, the number is. But if you know in your mind that, that getting those number of downloads is going to drive whatever value then go for it, even if it's one person, right? If you're selling a, if you're selling a million dollar product and the app costs you, you know, a thousand dollars to develop or ten thousand dollars to develop, then the return is that worth it, yeah? <laughs> well, um, I'm just not gonna waste more time. I guess we would like to hear from you guys. Um, you have any questions, feel free to step up the, 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 the mics. I've got something for you right here. So the first to ask questions will get a, uh, a Bose sound true earphones from us. Yeah? I have a question. You have a question? Oh, all right. This is only limited to the, the delegates, so... <laughs> um, any questions?